Now, if we just reflect on the past year, what key insights have you gained regarding the deployment of Genitive AI in business scenarios to kind of ensure their success? I think the two key aspects that one should consider when trying to get these use cases with large language models or generative AI into production is first, you have to know the data. And what I mean by that is it is a completely useful use of an LLM engineer's time to sit down and actually go through the data, read it, understand it, try to do the job that you're trying to address with artificial intelligence because it lets you build a better internal model and understanding of what's happening, uh, which can then translate to better results down the line. I think the other key aspect that I see a lot is people will take their entire use case, give it to the large language model, and when the large language model isn't able to do that out of the box, then they write off the technology. But I don't think that's the best way of addressing these types of problems. What we really want to get at and what I have found to be the most effective way of deploying these technologies is that when I sit down with a stakeholder or I sit down with a product owner and we try to come up with a solution, I'm looking at the entire use case and saying, what is the key piece of that use case that requires artificial intelligence, which requires a large language model to reason or do some sort of logic with their problem? And then what parts of the problem can I um, extract away using software? So the key success comes from the blending of software with artificial intelligence to restrict that problem space so that the LLM can be more successful. Um, if you will allow me to, let me give you an example. There's a very um, interesting use case called like talk to your database. Uh, more technically, it's natural language to SQL. And so you give the database schema to the large language model and let the large language model uh, take user queries or user questions, write the query, and then we execute it against a database and the LLM will try to answer with what came to your database. What a lot of people will do is they think of this as an AI problem. Can I get the best model? Do I have to fine tune my model to the schema? Uh, let me hire a bunch of LLM engineers to come in and, and really treat this from the AI side. But I think there's a better way of addressing this type of use case, which is the question is not how do I get a large language model to do natural language to SQL on my database, but rather can I find a database schema for my data which fits within the problem space that the large language model can address? Suddenly, it's no longer about artificial intelligence and statistics and fine tuning and all of these uh, fancy words, but rather it's now a problem that any database administrator can solve. Uh, and so I can sit here and say that out of the box, I would probably default to something like SQL Coder V2 as your go to model for this use case. And then where you're going to lose most of your accuracy in production is going to be joining tables together. So if you can find a database schema for your data, which will reduce the latency for queries and also reduce the number of joins you have to make, you're probably going to find that you'll be much more successful. And this is what I mean when I say the core problem here isn't necessarily an AI problem, but it becomes a database problem. And it's about blending traditional software knowledge and technology with AI and knowing how to juggle between them and where to draw that line.